Did you do your homework? Yes, everybody did their homework. Yeah, okay. Now tell me, what are the two types of deaths of the mind? Described on page 217. Who's going to start? What is the first one called? We have learnt a term for it. Jeevan Mukta. Mm, correct. Jeevan Mukta. Yeah, so in the first one, you are practicing throughout your lifetime. You reach a stage where all the mental conditioning drops off. You may exist in the body. Yes, but the mind has ceased to exist as in of course, the mind is there. You have brains and you know how to speak and how to do things and do your mathematics. All that is all intact. Don't worry. The conditioning, I like this, I don't like this. The basis of this is desire. I want or I don't want. That drops off. Got it? The moment desire drops off, there is no more attachment. The moment there is no more attachment, there is no mental conditioning. Yeah, there are no concepts, there are no notions, there are no precepts. Yeah, when there are no concepts, no notions, nothing, you lead a very moment to moment life. You are hollow and empty like a pipe. Yeah, so you lead a life depending on what is happening in the moment right now. Yes, if right now you are in a Rajasik environment, the climate is Rajasik, the environment is Rajasik, this body will automatically take that form of Rajas. There will be activity, you will get up, you will do your things, go to work, whatever, clean the house. If the atmosphere or the climate, everything around you is very Satvik, this body-mind complex will operate in a sattvic manner. You start living close to nature. Did you get it? Yeah. You become so hollow and empty. You are like a flute. It's like God is playing that flute. And how God is playing that flute? Through Rajas, Tamas and Sattva. These are the three gunas that run this entire universe yes all the prakriti so this body mind complex is also prakriti yeah right now we are not at that stage so how do we operate we operate from ragas and dveshas yeah we are not pure our we don't let the prakriti or the gunas flow through us naturally there is no spontaneity there is a reaction to a guna. I like this, I don't like this, I want this, I don't want this. This reaction creates attachment, that attachment creates the conditioning and then we are caught up in that cycle. Becoming free of this entire drama that I just explained to you is pure mind. Got it? You attain that pure mind while in this body. That is called the death of the mind. The first type of death. Yeah. And then, of course, when the sage leaves the body even. Yeah. That is the second type of death of the mind. Now, that is beyond description. Because while in the body, he had already purified that mind. That mind had already died. Yeah. So the second type of death is indescribable. Got it? Got the two types of deaths of the mind? So page 217 is clear to everybody? 
Yes, Sakul. So, in the second type of death of mind, hmm. for the sage, uh, when the sage is living, he has full control on the mind, his mind is dead. So, when the, when the sage leaves the body, so mind is already dead, then what is, how do you say it is a further enhancement? Like, how come a dead thing become again dead again? So beautiful. Very nice question. See, this body also exists because of the mind. You remember? First few pages of Yoga Vashishta, session 1, 2, 3. Yeah? The subtle mind gave birth, the subtle body, which is the mind, gave birth to the physical body. Correct? Now, while living with the physical body, the subtle body dies. Yeah? It dies means its current mental conditioning completely dies. Yeah? But the impressions are still there. That is why the body is still living. Yeah? So how long will this body live now without the subtle body? How long will the physical body live? Only as long as the impressions that were collected remain. Finally, this physical body will also die. That is the final death of the mind. Means the final death of the remaining impressions in the mind. Got it? What about the person like a normal person like us dies and we haven't yet control over Mind is not dead yet, but we leave the body. So what do you call the mind dies for those persons or it doesn't die? No, it doesn't die. Because the and mind the is not dead. The memories it has. Yes. It has the past impressions, memories, karmas are there. Yes. But the mind is separate than those or not? The mind is a collection of all the impressions plus the intellect plus the ego. The collection of all impressions is nothing but memory plus the identification, the false I, 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 the false existence that is the ego plus the intellect which indulges in logic, right, wrong, good, bad. Yes, all this together is the subtle body. Got it? So now all this has to die. So, in the first type of death, only your intellect is really dying. Yeah? With all its mental conditioning. Obviously, how the intellect will die if the mental conditioning is alive, it's not possible. So, mental conditioning is concept and notions and percepts in the mind. I like, I don't like. I am like this, she is like this, he is like this. All this exists because of your intellect. That part first dies. Got it? Ego dies. Yeah. These two are the first death of the mind. That's where you say it is purified. So the mind has died. Because the ego, which is the cause of actually coming into body, that and this intellect, which is the cause of the mental conditioning, both are dead. Now what is remaining? Your memory with the impressions. Yes. Because of that, the body will still continue for whatever its karma is. Yeah. And then that will also die. Yeah. For example, I'll give you an example. A wheel. If I'm if I'm pushing a wheel round and round and round, it'll keep going round and round. Yeah. My hand which is pushing it round and round is the subtle mind. Means the intellect and the ego. Now the intellect and the ego dies, this drops. Will the wheel stop? No. The wheel will continue because of momentum. It has a certain momentum. For some time it is going to continue. That is the body and it is still alive. Because of those remaining impressions. Got it? 
finally when those impressions get exhausted this will become slower 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 and finally it stops got it then tell me about animals they don't have intellect they they are only stuck because of the eye absolutely that is why you must take a human birth to get liberated it is not possible to get liberated in any other form but to even get to that point to this point intellect is required it is a tool to help you understand all this knowledge it is a tool to help you understand oh how did i begin this great cycle of maya now i have to drop this now have to drop this raga now have to drop this dvesha to understand this you need intellect yes that is why it is only possible in a human birth that is why i say no don't waste this lifetime otherwise what is it mitesh mahati vinashti the greatest disaster yeah so don't let that happen it's funny how you always ask mitesh that question <laughs> it's funny how he does it <laughs> ऐसे ही नहीं बोलते हैं स्क्रिप्चर्स में कि ह्यूमन लाइफ इज द ओनली वे आउट इट्स रियली इज क्या हाँ वेरी नाइस क्वेश्चन बेसिकली फॉर दैट वील टू स्टॉप ऑल्सो इट रिक्वायर a requirement is that the whole life you have done your spiritual practice this is for a sage page 217 he's talking about a sage but simple people the non sage like people they were also supposed to be given one chance no that one chance is that window of liberation <laughs> got it so that is why guru ji says no don't worry you have a better chance at all this yeah, you will never really go down in katopnishad only guru ji said no even if you've taken one step in gyana one step in knowledge you will never go down to the lower worlds you remember the lower worlds yeah you will never go down to the lower planes of existence you will only keep rising higher now this is the other way of explaining it not it two and seven clear for everybody good let's go to page 218 very very important session you can unmute yourself guys um i will uh, say the sutra you can repeat after me yeah and then one of you can read yeah so page 218 we'll do the sutra dve bija chitta vrikshasya dve bija chitta vrikshasya vrik तीधारिणपर्यस्पंदो द्वितीय दृढ़भावना नाइ कैन स्टार्ट रीडिंग Gama asked, "Lord, what is the seed of this fearful tree known as the mind, and what is the seed of that seed, and so on?" Mr. Krishna replied, "Gama, the seed for this world appears in the body within, with all its 
Alex knows shits and cons. That body, which flows constantly in the direction of hopes and desires, and which is also the repository of notions, being and non-being, and the consequent sorrow. The world appears the mind illustrated by the dream state. Whatever is seen here as the world is but the expansion of the mind. Even as Spots are transformations of clay. The two seeds for the tree known as the mind, which carries within its innumerable notions and ideas, are movement of prana and obstinate fancy. When there is movement of prana in the appropriate channels, then there is movement in consciousness and mind arises. Again, it is the movement of prana alone when it is seen or apprehended by the mind that is seen as this word appearance, which is as real as the blueness of the sky. The cessation of the cessation of the word appearance too. The omnipresent consciousness is awakened, as it were, by the movement of prana. If this does not happen, then there is supreme good. When consciousness is awakened thus, it begins to apprehend objects, ideas arise, and then sorrow. On the other hand, if this consciousness rests in itself as if fast asleep, then one attains what is most desirable, and that is the supreme state. Then one attains what is most desirable, and that is the supreme state. Therefore, you will realize the unborn state of consciousness if you either restrain the movement of prana in your own psychological ground of concepts and notions, or refrain from disturbing the homogeneity in consciousness. It is when this homogeneity is disturbed and the consciousness experiences diversity that the mind arises, and the countless psychological conditions spring up into activity. In order to bring about quiescence of the mind, the yogi practices pranayama, restraint of the movement of the life force, meditation, and such other proper and appropriate methods. Great yogi regard this pranayama itself as the most appropriate method for the achievement of tranquility of the mind, peace, etc. I shall now describe to you the other viewpoint that of the men of wisdom born of their direct experience. They declare that the mind is born of one's obstinate clinging to a fancy or deluded imagination. Okay. Let's start with the pool of consciousness. Yeah. The pool of consciousness or the Brahman consciousness. This Brahman consciousness is actually pulsating. Yes, it's not absolutely quiet. It's pulsations. There are pulsations all over. Yes, so every little part or every little inch of this Brahman conscious consciousness is pulsating. These pulsations is called prana. Yes? So basically, it is just one big ocean of prana. Yeah? Beginning of the creation, there is nothingness, no prakriti. Just a huge ocean of prana. Yeah? Means pulsations in the consciousness. The consciousness is live. Yeah? It is pulsating. Got it? So just imagine it as vibrations. Vibrations all over. And that's all it is. Now, what happens in this one pool of consciousness? One little Can you see the blue one distinctly? Yeah? 
you are the blue one. For example, you are the blue wave. At the beginning of the creation, this prana is absolutely silent. It is a part of the consciousness. Yes? There is no recognition of I yet. Everything is just one pulsating pool. Got it? Now, what happens in this pulsating pool? Come to the second paragraph. I am not reading the first two lines of the second paragraph which is the uh, two seeds for the tree. We will come to that later. That is the sutra. Let's start directly at when there is movement of prana in the appropriate channels, then there is movement in consciousness and mind arises. One line tells you everything. Prana is moving. It's constantly moving. Yes, prana is moving. But somehow this prana doesn't coincide with your blue wave. Somewhere it is larger, somewhere it is smaller. Prana is moving. Suddenly, this prana coincides with the blue wave. That is called appropriate channel. When there is movement of prana in the appropriate channels, then there is movement in consciousness. Yes, this is very important. Suddenly, there is a recognition of I. The movement of consciousness happens in this blue wave. Suddenly, because there was appropriate movement of prana happening. You got what I am saying? Yeah? The wave suddenly coincided. So, the first step that happens is the movement in consciousness and the second mind arises so from this movement the mind arose which said I that was the birth of the mind is this one line clear? yes Again, it is the movement of prana alone when it is seen or apprehended by the mind that is seen as this world appearance which is as real as the blueness of the sky. Now suddenly here you is born or I is born because the prana started flowing in the correct channel. The consciousness came up. What consciousness are we talking about here? Individual consciousness. This is the pool of Brahman consciousness. And this blue thing suddenly realized, Oh, I am individual consciousness. It's like a drop of water or a wave in the ocean suddenly recognizing, Oh, I am a wave. And then the second step is the birth of the mind. I. Got it? First is like a breath, a recognition. You breathe in. And the second is you start crying. That crying is the birth of the mind. The breathing in is the recognition of the individual consciousness. Got it? This is how the mind is born. Now this mind which is born says I am like this. I want to be this. I like that. I don't like that. This is how mental conditioning is born. Yes? And that mental conditioning leads to this consciousness rising even more. And they feed into each other. That's exactly what is said on this page. Yeah? 
So now let's read it. Now after understanding this, we'll read that paragraph again. When there is movement of prana in the appropriate channels, then there is movement in consciousness and mind arises. Again, it is the movement of prana alone that is seen as this world appearance, which is as real as the blueness of the sky. The cessation of the movement of prana is the cessation of the world appearance too. The omnipresent consciousness is awakened as it were by the movement of prana. If this does not happen, then there is supreme good. Means, if this individual consciousness, this blue little wave had not awakened, there was no movement in this consciousness, there would be supreme good. But now, maya starts because there is this awakening of consciousness happening here. Awakening of individual consciousness. Got it? To put it in simpler words, this is the Turiya state at the beginning when there is nothing happening, just pulsation, pulsation, just vibration in the pool of consciousness. This is the deep sleep state or the Turiya avastha. And in that Turiya avastha, suddenly Jagrit avastha happens because of flow of that prana. That Jagrit Avastha is the movement of that individual consciousness. It's like that first breath. It's like the first breath. There is no breath here really. I'm just kind of equating it with taking birth in this mortal world. And then the mind is born. And the mind says I like this, I don't like this. That it sticks on to mental conditioning. That mental conditioning feeds into the movement of that individual consciousness, which is that individual prana. And that again feeds into mental conditioning. Again, that feeds into movement of prana. And this vicious cycle continues. Got it? So what are the two seeds? What are the two seeds? Simple, no? I have told you. Yeah. Yeah, movement of prana and I. I. Perfect. Got it? If you understand this, you have understood that page. Yes, Sakul. One thing is this uh, movement of prana, prana. But what do you mean by the channels here? So now if any movement is happening, yeah, the movement is happening in a particular rhythm, yeah, that rhythm is homogeneous. It's not heterogeneous. It's a homogeneous rhythm happening everywhere. Yeah, letting that homogeneity be is the deep sleep state. But in that homogeneity, one wave comes up and Suddenly, there is this recognition of, oh, I am an individual consciousness. There is this movement in consciousness that happens. Yeah? That movement in consciousness leads to the formation of I. Yes? And it is nothing but, we've learned this in physics, no? If you remember, I don't know what they were called, crest and trough. Yeah, the peak and the valley, the peak and the valley and suddenly the peak and the valley coincide. Yeah? When they coincide with your particular individual consciousness, you can still let it be. You can still be a part of that homogeneity and not wake up as an individual consciousness. Yes, But you wake up as an individual consciousness. That is where the whole Maya begins. Got it? From Turiya Avastha, you came to what Jagrat Avastha. Yeah, Mitesh. 
So wait, what did you say? You said you can be your wave waves can coincide and still continue. Still continue to without, be. Yeah, with, without. Yeah, he said it. No. It to the mind. Yes. It's there on this page. We'll read it. But you understood this, everybody? If you lose this, you lose the whole page. Everybody got this, no? Very simple. Yeah? Now let's read it. Now let's read from the beginning. Rama asked, Lord, what is the seed of this fearful tree known as the mind? And what is the seed of that seed? And so on. Means what is the seed of that seed and then what is the seed of that seed and then what is the seed of that seed. He is asking what is the beginning point basically. So Vashishta replies, Rama, the seed for this world appearance is the body within with all its notions and concepts of good and evil. What body is he talking about? The subtle body. Yeah. The subtle body has concepts of good and evil, no? Which is intellect. Notions is nothing but all your impressions saved in memory. Got it? That body also has a seed, which is the mind, which flows constantly in the direction of hopes and desires and which is also the repository of notions of being and non-being and the consequent sorrow. Yeah? So the seed of intellect and impressions is the mind which goes into desires basically. Ragas and Dveshas. Got it? He's going one step deeper. The world appearance arises only in the mind. And this is illustrated by the dream state. Basically, by the dream state you understand, you know, that, oh, the mind can conjure up something and make it so real. Yeah, sometimes you start sweating in your dream, you start screaming in your dream. So you know, there can be a world appearance which is totally unreal. Yeah. Whatever is seen here as the world is but the expansion of the mind. Yeah, so he's saying everything here is nothing but a figment of your mind. Even as pots are transformations of clay. Yeah, basically all waves are nothing but water. All pots are nothing but clay. Yeah, so same analogy. The two seeds for the tree known as the mind which carries within it innumerable notions and ideas are one movement of prana which is life force and two obstinate fancy. Got it? This is the same sutra on the top of the page. Dve BJ, two seeds, Chitta Vrikshaye of the tree of the mind, Vritti Vrittati Dharina, Vrittis, all the notions, they are called Vrittis, you remember modulations of the mind, yeah, from Patanjali, he called them Vrittis. So all these Vrittis are born out of this. Yeah, or they are carried with the mind. And the two seeds are what? Ekam, one. Prana, pari, spando. Movement of prana. But spandan actually, the real better translation would be a vibration. Spandan, those who know Hindi, spandan means vibration. So it is a vibration of the prana is one. Dvitiyam Dridha Bhavana. Bhavana, Hindi word. An emotion. Dridha, strong. Yeah. 
So in other words, holding on to something very strongly, a thought, an emotion, a fantasy, some attachment. Yeah? Nothing but this I over here. Yeah? That is nothing but that Dhrida Bhavana. And this is nothing, this blue wave here is nothing but that Spandan. Yeah? The Spandan in the Prana. Got it? These are the two seeds, he says, of the tree known as the mind. When there is movement of prana in the appropriate channels, then there is movement in consciousness and mind arises. So there is movement of prana anyways happening all the time, everywhere. Everything is vibrating. Yes, even quantum mechanics talks about this, that everything is nothing but waves. Yeah, they are all constantly moving. It's just that we don't have that kind of a range of vision to observe it. Everything is just a vibration. Everything is in motion. Even that which appears to be static is not static. Yeah. So, when there is movement of prana in the appropriate channel, suddenly the crest and the trow coincide, they meet. Yes? Then there is movement in consciousness. There is that individual consciousness that wakes up. That is the movement in consciousness. And the mind arises. Again, it is the movement of prana alone that is seen as this world appearance, which is as real as the blueness of the sky. Yeah, basically, once you arise out of this deep sleep state, you start observing this entire maya as real. You start observing, oh, this is something, this is one thing, this is that thing. The moment I is born, you is also born, no? I cannot be without you, you cannot be without I. Yes, so the moment this I is born, immediately you is born. This becomes you, this becomes you, this becomes you. Yeah, and that is nothing but the world appearance and it is not real. Yeah? Blueness of sky, the sky is not really blue, you know this, right? We've discussed this before. It is just the refraction of light that makes the sky look blue. It is an illusion, magic trick. <clears throat> the omnipresent consciousness is awakened. Got it? This is the omnipresent consciousness. The blue wave is awakened as it were by the movement of prana. If this does not happen, then there is supreme good. Got it? Disaster happened when it awakened. Basically, you got out of your awesome deep sleep state or the Turiya yes. So bad happened basically. When consciousness is awakened thus, it begins to apprehend objects Ideas arise and then sorrow. So basically what happens? Now, I has come up. If I has come up, you has come up. Now this you is very attractive. Yeah? Raga develops. Ideas arise means Sukha. I like this or I want this because it gives me Sukha. Attachment comes up and that attachment is Dense sorrow. Why is it sorrow? Why is it sorrow? First you want to acquire it, then you want to maintain it. And then it will pass away. Perfect. Then? Then There is more. There is more. It doesn't end with that. Because of your attachment to it, it has created a very strong impression in your consciousness. That impression will lead to birth and death and birth and death. And you will be constantly, 
caught in the cycle of birth and death away from your pool of consciousness. The Turiya Avastha which is natural to you. You will never experience this peace because you have suddenly tangent, you become a tangent and come out of the pool of consciousness. That is why sorrow. Cut it. The sorrow is because of this attachment to this whatever object you got attracted to. You got lost in birth and death cycle and you came out of your Turiya Vastha. When consciousness is awakened, thus it begins to apprehend objects, ideas arise and thence sorrow. On the other hand, if this consciousness rests in itself as if fast asleep, then one attains what is most desirable and that is the supreme state. Got it? If this blue wave did not get out of here, it would rest where it was and that is the supreme state. Therefore, you will realize the unborn state of consciousness if you either restrain the movement of prana, that is one, in your own psychological ground of concepts and notions, or two, refrain from disturbing the homogeneity in consciousness. You want to read it again? Therefore, you will realize the unborn state of consciousness. One, if you either restrain the movement of prana in your own psychological ground of concepts and notions. Or two, refrain from disturbing the homogeneity in consciousness. Got it? This is a homogeneous pool of vibrations. Yes? This blue wave disturbed the homogeneity. Yes? You can remain in that without letting that prana which is vibrating in that particular channel disturb your Turiya Avastha. Yes, that is one way of maintaining the homogeneity. The second way is, okay, disturb my Turiya Vastha, I am awake but I have learned to restrain my notions and concepts and precepts. The mind is born but I am learning to contain it or restrain the mental, mental conditioning. Got it? We are actually still in the pool of consciousness only. We are waves, yes, and we are vibrating with this prana. The problem is we are lost in this cycle of I and mine and we can refrain from it by letting go of this mental conditioning. That way also we will unite with the supreme state. The other way is to maintain the homogeneity and not react in the first position. Well, that first chance is gone. The second option left only for us is to restrain the movement of prana in your own psychological ground. Got it? Firstly, when you said that this is appropriate channels match and whatever that you were explaining, hmm. then even if, let's like, say, by whatever hook or group, to end up in today almost to get enlightened. Hmm. Then these channels when they whatever whoever is controlling these channels when they meet up again, the eye is gonna be gone, right? Yes. The eye is gone to be gone. Is there it's misery? You live your misery, you die your misery. <laughs> no 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 no. <laughs> So sweet. The I is gone, mind is gone, the body is gone, all mental notions gone. You will be in absolute deep sleep state. But I 
I was in deep sleep state. Well, you came out. <laughs> Only you are responsible here. Yeah, so see, this from this diagram, the way I explained, everything was vibration. Nothing was there. Now, an appropriate channel got matched. Something was born out of it, right? You, you were born. I. I was born out of it, and then everything bad happened. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is no, there is no running away from from that channel to happen again. You cannot say बाहर से guarantee आना चाहिए. अंदर से guarantee लाओ कि I am going to remain in that तुरिया अवस्था and not pop out again. That's it. The vibration is going to happen. You have to be so strong that you don't have to come out. Despite this vibration happening, despite this matching happening, you maintain your ground. You don't lose your ground. So you that's what. Experience what happens when you lose ground, right? So why would you go back there? Why I would you? I have a choice. It, I did not kill myself. You experienced it. The others have not experienced it. That's why you went to I. And after I the I, when you go back, you experience what happens. She's right. completely of this mental conditioning you tre arrest this part this will automatically calm down you will come back here or second you learn to respect the homogeneity of this vibration in the pool of consciousness when you start respecting that that is the way it is going to be and the prana will vibrate in those channels and one day coincide with me but i should not get into that awakened state of individual consciousness i should just maintain my turiya avastha that is respecting the homogeneity again we'll read that paragraph when consciousness is awakened thus it begins to apprehend objects ideas arise and then sorrow on the other hand if this consciousness rests in itself as if fast asleep then one attains what is most desirable and that is the supreme state therefore you will realize the unborn state of consciousness if one you either restrain the movement of prana in your own psychological ground of concepts and notions basically arresting your eye or two refrain from disturbing the homogeneity in consciousness it is when this homogeneity is disturbed and the consciousness experiences diversity that the mind arises and the countless psychological conditions spring up into activity got it again we'll read that sentence it is when this homogeneity is disturbed everything is homogeneous 
yes it gets disturbed because of that matching of the crest and trow and the consciousness experiences diversity diversity happens because there is this jagrit avastha here which says i the moment there is an i there is a you this is diversity then the mind arises and the countless psychological conditionings i you i like i don't like you this and everything comes up in order to bring about questions of the mind the yogi practices pranayama restraint of the movement of the life force or prana yeah prana i am i am is restraint of the movement meditation and such other proper and appropriate methods great yogi regard this pranayam itself as the most appropriate method for the achievement of tranquility of the mind peace etc clear so far I shall now describe to you the other viewpoint that of the men of wisdom born of their direct experience they declare that the mind is born of one's obstinate clinging to a fancy or deluded imagination who wants to read the next page 219 what is to continue when obstinately clinging to a fancy and therefore abandoning a thorough inquiry into the nature of truth one apprehends an object with that fancy such apprehension is described as conditioning or limitation when such fancy is persistently and intensely indulged in this world appearance arises in consciousness when the psychological conditioning or limitation is not dense when it has become transparent one becomes a liberated sage who apparently lives and functions by past momentum even as potter's wheel rotates after the initial impulse has been withdrawn but he will not be born again in his case the seed has been fried as it were and will not germinate into world illusion when the body falls he is absorbed into the infinite of the two seeds for this world illusion namely movement of prana and clinging to fancy if one is got rid of the other also goes away for the two are interdependent the mind creates the world illusion and the mind is created by the movement of prana in one's own condition again this movement of prana also takes place because of the mental conditioning or fancy then this vicious circle is completed one feeds the other one spurs the other into action motion is natural to prana and when it moves into consciousness mind arises then the conditioning keeps the prana in motion when one is arrested both fall gamma the notion of an object of knowledge of experience is the seed for both movement of prana and for the clinging to a fancy for it is only when such desire for experience arises in the heart that such movement of prana and mental conditioning takes place when such desire for experience is abandoned both these cease instantly of course the indwelling consciousness is the seed for this desire for experience for without that consciousness the desire for such experience will not arise at all however it has no object of experience either outside or inside when the truth is realized the illusion ceases to be hence orana strive to eradicate the desire for experience get rid of idleness free yourself from all experiences rama asked loud lord how can these two be reconciled can i seek freedom from all experiences and freedom from inactivity at the same time was sister replied he who has he who has no desire or hope for anything here nor entertains a wish to rest in inactivity such a one does not exist as a jiva 
he is neither an active nor does he seek to experience. He does not lean towards experience or perception of objects, though he is engaged in ceaseless activity. He is neither inactive nor does he do anything or experience anything. The objective experiences do not touch the heart at all. Hence, he whose consciousness is not inactive is a liberated sage here and now. Okay. Yeah, so, the first one we learned obviously movement of prana. Yeah, the second is obstinate fancy is nothing but I. Yeah. So, when obstinately clinging to a fancy and therefore abandoning a thorough inquiry into the nature of truth, one apprehends an object with that fancy. Such apprehension is described as condition or limitation. The moment this happened, the consciousness came, there was movement here in the prana, an immediate fancy came up, I, yes, and the clinging onto this fancy came up and probably the first body said, I want to be earth, I want to be fire, I want to be water. That I and that clinging onto that and then that raga, to do something or be something is the mental conditioning that is described here. Why did that happen? Because immediately this pool of consciousness which is already vibrating, yeah, the truth was abandoned. There was an immediate clinging to I. Yeah, that is the obstinate fancy which is described here. Anyway, they cannot exist independently. The obstinate fancy and this movement in consciousness. They are interdependent. They describe that in the paragraph ahead. Yeah. But some sages say this is the main cause. Some sages say I is the main cause. Doesn't matter. Both are interdependent anyways. When the psychological conditioning or limitation is not dense, when it has become transparent, one becomes a liberated sage. Yeah, basically you are going through this knowledge and through the practice of pranayama, spirituality, you thin down this curtain of conditioning of maya on you. Yeah? You come towards liberation, you become a liberated sage who apparently lives and functions by past momentum. So the first mind dies. I explained that to you. Yeah. So that impulse which was moving the wheel suddenly has fallen off with the death of the mind. Yeah. But the wheel still continues because of past momentum. Even as a potter's wheel rotates after the initial impulse has been withdrawn. Got it? But he will not be born again. In his case, the seed has been fried as it were and will not germinate into world illusion. When the body falls, he is absorbed into the infinite. Of the two seeds for this world illusion, namely this movement in prana and the clinging to fancy, if one is got rid of, the other also goes away, for the two are interdependent. Got it? This movement in prana, this blue wave and this obstinate fancy I, I and the mental conditioning that comes with it, both are interdependent. If one is dropped, if you drop the I, automatically the prana will be arrested. If you drop or let go or arrest the movement of the prana, the mental conditioning collapses. The mind creates the world illusion and the mind is created by the movement of prana in one's own conditioning. Again, this movement of prana also takes place because of the mental conditioning or fancy. Thus this vicious circle is completed.
got it as movement of your consciousness because of movement of prana this leads to i i i which leads to mental conditioning which leads to this entire maya or world appearance and because of that entire maya world appearance it feeds back into the prana which starts moving even more the spandan increases and that again feeds into more notions and concepts and precepts and conditioning so this vicious cycle continues one feeds the other one spurs the other into action motion is natural to prana here's your answer this motion is natural to this entire pool of prana and when it moves in consciousness which is this blue wave mind arises then the conditioning keeps the prana in motion when one is arrested both will fall rama the notion of an object of knowledge of experience is the seed for both movement of prana and for the clinging to a fancy so this movement of prana and this clinging to a fancy i i i that also has a seed and what is that seed for it is only when such desire for experience arises in the heart that such movement of prana and mental conditioning take place so what is it what is that seed desire desire for experience right here that wave had that desire for experience yeah or desire for knowledge whatever it is knowledge as in knowing wanting to know yeah when such desire for experience is abandoned both these will cease instantly so the seed for either this wave or this obstinate fancy or mental conditioning is nothing but desire for experience yes so that is the meaning of it that you can be there and still not come out of your turiya avastha the coming out of your turiya avastha or that awakening of the individual consciousness happens because of that desire for experience yeah even if the crest and the trough of the wave match yeah doesn't matter respect the homogeneity of this pool of consciousness of this pool of vibration and just be just be that is the key the moment you drop the being and there is wanting i want finish that's the moment you are out of your turiya avastha into the jagrat avastha there is movement in consciousness which is the first birth of the blue wave and then the second is the the janma of i i i mind is born and then this feeds into this and this feeds into this and this feeds into this yes so the seed is desire but besides the this a uh, seed for desire this even the karma right the impression so even suppose initially it was a seed for desire but that led to the karma bag so first you have to deplete the karma bag and then deplete the desires to come back right if you deplete the desire you are actually attacking the root you are pulling the root out the karma bag automatically will drop drop off that is why be a jeevan mukta the first death of the mind is what attacking this root that desire for experience that desire for knowledge drop the wanting 
I want, I want, just be. That was the problem right here. Just being was the problem. Oh, I have just been for a very long time. I have got a chance yeah, to want. And that moment, the individual consciousness was born. Yes? So drop the wanting. That is the root cause. Don't think about the karma bag. The karma bag will go automatically after your mind dies. The first type of death of the mind occurs. And the first type of death of the mind will occur only if you directly attack the root of desire. Desire is nothing but I want and I don't want. Raga or Dvesha. There is nothing else. Clear? Of course, the indwelling consciousness is the seed for this desire of experiencing. Yeah, there is consciousness here in the blue wave. Yeah, they are all vibrating consciousness. Yes, but again recognize, without the consciousness, the desire for such experience will not arise at all. That is true. However, it does not have an object of experience either inside or outside. Yeah, the object does not exist really. So you can stay in that Turiya Avastha. Yeah. This is the truth. This is the highest truth that the object of experience does not exist in this individual consciousness. This individual consciousness is there. Even right at the beginning of creation when you didn't come out of it, you were there as an individual consciousness vibrating with the pool of prana. Yes, There was no object of experience inside you or outside you. But you had the desire to experience. That desire led to that individual awakening of consciousness called the Jagratavastha, which led to step number two, the formation of the mind, I. Got it? So you can't do away with that, no? You are the individual consciousness and you are always going to be vibrating yeah, in that pool of consciousness. All you have to do away with is the desire for experience. When this truth is realized, the illusion ceases to be. Hence, O Rama, strive to eradicate the desire for experience. Get rid of idleness. Free yourself from all experiences. That's your homework. Get rid of idleness, first of all. I don't want to do anything. I want to sit and, sit and watch TV. That is also a, a desire for experience. I want to get up and do something is also desire for experience. Catch 22 situation. What to do? Just being, not doing, not wanting to do, not wanting to not do. Got it? That golden line, thread like line, you have to walk on that. Not tipping over to this side, not tipping over to that side. Yes, that is just being. So Rama asks, Lord, how can these two be reconciled? Can I seek freedom from all experiences? And freedom from inactivity at the same time. 
Yeah, because what do we think freedom from all experiences means not doing anything, just being inactive, sitting and doing nothing. But doing nothing is also a doing. That's what Rama does not understand here. Vashishta replied, He who has no desire or hope for anything here, nor entertains a wish to rest, in inactivity such a one does not exist as a jiva he is neither inactive nor does he seek to experience got it not saying I want to experience this not saying I don't want to experience this just being with what is yeah. Same thing, Ashtavakra taught us, be a Sakshi, Sakshi Bhava. Yeah. He who does not lean towards experience or perception of objects, though he is engaged in ceaseless activity, is neither inactive nor does he do anything or experience anything. Again, he who does not lean towards experience or perception of objects, though he is engaged in activity, is neither inactive nor does he do anything or experience anything. Yeah. Just being with what is. Whatever is happening, I just respond spontaneously. Not out of my raga to do it or out of my dvesha to not do it. No reaction basically. Just responding. That is the key. The objective experiences do not touch the heart at all. Hence, he whose consciousness is not inactive, is a liberated sage here and now. Great, no? Awesome two pages. Yeah. I know it's kind of heavy. I want you to read these two pages again and again and again. Seven times in the next seven days. Yes, every day read the same two pages, it's okay. Every day you will feel, oh I understood one thing better today. Oh I understood this better today. Yes, because see all this is trying to trap something in words, that which is beyond explanation by the intellect or mind. Yes, so there is a limitation to what can be expressed in words. It's more of a meditation. You sit down and you meditate and in your deepest meditation you can actually experience that your whole body does not exist. It is nothing but vibrations, vibrations, vibrations. Yeah? And that is the Buddhist method of meditation basically. Yeah? In the Buddhist method, what do they do? They just tell you to sit with your eyes closed. No music, nothing outside. No external uh, ingredients to you know, keep the mind busy. It's actually just going within and observing what is. And what is really? Nothing. Just my breath, this whole body, whatever, 50, 60, 80, 100 kgs, whatever you are. 120, 150 pounds, just observing the body, observing the heaviness of the body, observing the mind, the thoughts, observing the sensations that a particular thought are, gives rise to in the body and slowly, slowly becoming so aware of every sensation, you can come to a point just observing your entire body, recognizing that it is nothing but full of vibrations. Yes, in your deepest observation, in your deepest Sakshi Bhava, 
meditation you will just observe 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 and there are vibrations throughout the body there's not a millimeter on your body that is free of vibrations we've just become so gross that we cannot observe the subtle vibrations yeah and that is the buddhist meditation or whatever vipassana whatever lord buddha taught lord buddha taught be with what is just observe 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 and when you really observe you come to a point where you observe this entire prana it's only vibrations that you will not feel the heaviness in the body you will feel as if you are just light yeah it has a term in buddhism it's called bhanga it's the experience of dissolution and it happens in your deepest meditation where you understand that you are nothing but just a pool of vibrations really and everything around you is vibrations everything i'm not talking about opening your eyes and seeing everything vibrating but in your deepest meditation you can experience everything is a vibration and you are in that pool of vibrations and you are also a vibration vibrating at a different wavelength than maybe a computer maybe a tv a desk a com- whatever is around you but you can experience that in your deepest meditation yeah to experience that you have to go beyond the meditations which deal with sight sound smell taste touch yeah because all these are help you just withdraw from the external sight sound but i'm still listening to words i'm still chanting something yeah going beyond that to just silence absolute observation being with what is and it is tough it is buddha's way of meditation that's why you must have seen lots of buddhist monks just sit and meditate and what are they doing they're just observing they're just observing their breath they're just observing their body in complete silence so homework for you throughout this week every day read these two pages again yeah every day the same two pages you read again you don't need to read ahead the same two pages you read again and you sit and meditate yeah and when you meditate without any chanting of any mantra without anything just observe your body just observe observe your mind go from every part by part we do that in yoga nidra no just go to every part of the body and just observe just observe don't move your body at all just observe 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 in that observation after a while you will obviously come up with lots of sensations you'll want to scratch here and your mind says scratch there pull your nose or oh, put your hair behind the ear all this natak your mind will do not listening to the mind no reaction this is also a desire for experience yeah to scratch the nose is a desire for experience to put the hair behind the ear is a desire for experience not reacting to any desire sitting absolutely still like the buddha yeah for one week practice it Yeah. Even if you just do for twenty minutes, twenty minutes, I'm going to still sit still like Buddha statue, and just observe every part of the body. Observe, observe, observe. If you can sit longer, half an hour, forty-five minutes, one hour, just continue sitting. Yeah. In your deepest meditation, in your most earnest and sincere meditation, you will definitely. come to the point of bhanga bhanga is complete dissolution of solidity you are just vibrations you will experience this pool of vibrations 
Homework is clear? Yes? Final homework? You will send me a summary of what you understood from these two pages. I want each one of you to write an email to me. Yes? Maybe diagram, draw, flowchart, make a powerpoint, however, whatever works for you. Write it in words, write it in Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati, Bengali, Spanish, German, Portuguese, doesn't matter. The way you understand it, this is very, very, very important. Yes, this is the crux of all scriptures. Yes, this is the crux of this entire creation. Yes, you complete reading those two pages and you send me the summary as you understand. Good? Yes? And if you come up with questions during the week, it's okay. Send me email, whatever. Call me, text me. But this has to be very, very, very clear. Yes? I'll see you next week, guys. Jai Gurudev.